But racquetball, I was the oldest in our family and I didn't see Dad a lot and that became the one thing really between us that we shared in my teen years. And so I learned the game from him, we would play it. And when I got to college is when it really, I took a quantum leap forward. That's when I started winning tournaments and bringing trophies home. And, and I, my whole package, man, it was, it was impressive. When I stepped onto the court, I brought a devastating backhand. And I brought a, a ferocious drive serve, which in racquetball is a key element of the game. And I brought a never-say-die tenacity. Doesn't matter how far I was behind, I was known as a comeback specialist. There was one other thing I brought onto the court with me every time, a volcanic temper, which at, at, at some point in the match was guaranteed to materialize. You think John McEnroe back in the day? Oh, he had nothing on me. It was ugly as sin because it was sin of the highest order, and I carried this with me year after year until I began my church in Connecticut in the mid-90s. And because I was doing the things we talked about this morning, reading, meeting with Jesus every day, scripture study, prayer and listening, community, I realized that the Lord was trying to reel this in, and it was time to do something about this. And so I called on our church chairman, who was a dear older man in our church, a godly man uh, named Bob. And, and since I had practiced this earlier with my porn struggle, I had no trouble going to an older man, a wiser man, for help. And I, I met with Bob and I said, Bob, I, I need you to pray for me. I need to share something with you. And I, and I poured it out, how I, I had, had no ability to control this anger. And Bob listened to me, and, and then he looked at me and kind of scratched his head, and he asked me a simple question, but very profound. Why do you get so angry? He said. And I didn't have an answer for him. And I thought about it. With every other sport, I had a competitive spirit, no matter what I did, uh, you know. But only with racquetball did my plant hands split open and my skin turn green. Only in this. And I said, well, I don't know. But I need help. Emotions function like the instrument panel of our cars. You know how like when the engine light goes on? heat gauge starts to bump up against neutral. We are being told that something is going on under the hood that's not healthy, that's not good, and a wise driver will stop and pay attention to that signal. Our emotions function the same way. But there's the problem for most of us, because most humans, and especially Christians, are notorious for not being able to recognize their emotional life. You might have heard of the, 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 the phrase emotional intelligence. It's a phrase people use today. Most Christians have the emotional intelligence of a, of a warthog. You can have a family, we, we did this, my, me and my, my girls, who's fighting furiously on the way to church. And in the time it takes to walk from the parking lot to the front door, that family can transform into a living, breathing nativity scene. 